On this day in 1981, Celtic beat Dundee United 3-2 at Tannadice to clinch the league title. When Celtic lost 4-1 to Aberdeen at Pataudry on the 27th of December 1980, few would have held out much hope that they would go on to regain the championship by the end of the season. The defeat left them three points behind Aberdeen who had a game in hand and they were now firm favourites to retain the title. Jim Reynolds wrote in the Glasgow Herald of the 29th of December 1980, I would say it is of paramount importance that Celtic move quickly to strengthen their pool and to do that the board must come up with the right kind of money to give the manager a proper chance. Even a new face or two may not be enough to haul the Parkhead side into a genuine challenging position in the league season, but it would certainly prove to the fans that Celtic are not content to be second best. There were no big money signings made, but from that point Celtic went on a long winning streak, taking 25 points out of a possible 26 from their next 13 matches. The only point dropped in that run came in a 1-1 draw against Aberdeen at Celtic Park on the 28th of March and a 1-0 win over Rangers at Ibrox, courtesy of a Charlie Nicholas goal on the 18th of April, meant Aberdeen could only equal their total, but Celtic had a far superior goal difference. While the Celtic fans celebrated wildly at Ibrox, Danny McGrain hurried his players off the pitch at the end and Billy McNeil refused to accept the championship was secure, despite the congratulations coming in from John Gregg and Alex Ferguson. McNeil told the Glasgow Herald of the 20th of April 1981, We still need one point to put ourselves in a position where we can't be caught and we will be going all out to give our fans a gala night by getting that point, at least, against Dundee United on Wednesday night. Only then can we relax and celebrate. After the warm spring sunshine of Ibrox, it was a bitterly cold night on Tayside as Celtic lined up Bonner, McGrain, Reid, McLeod, McAdam, Aitken, Proven, Conroy, McGarvey, Burns, Nicholas, Subs, McDonald, Doyle. The party got started early as Murdo McLeod scored a brilliant goal after only two minutes. Jim Reynolds wrote in the Glasgow Herald of the 23rd of April 1981, Coppel made a bad pass out on the right. Proven picked it up and held long enough for McLeod to make a run into the penalty area. When the cross came over, the Celtic midfield man made a magnificent leap above the United defence and headed powerfully into the net from 15 yards. This was Celtic's 80th league goal of the season, a new Premier Division record. Just after the quarter hour mark, United were level after a breakaway move saw Pat Bonner save Ralph Milne's shot, but Willie Pettigrew followed up to slam home the rebound. It was only a temporary setback as Frank McGarvey grabbed his 29th goal of the season, tapping in at the back post after Tom McAdam headed on a Davy Proven corner. The second half began with a furious onslaught from United and Willie Pettigrew missed a gilt-edged chance after 52 minutes. But on the hour mark, Tommy Burns put Celtic further ahead with a wonderful goal. Alex Cameron reported in the Daily Record of the 23rd of April, United were certainly sharper in the second half, but Celtic put tremendous work into their play and I thought merited their goal in 60 minutes. It was splendidly taken by Tommy Burns, who had time to swerve and weave and turn the ball onto his good left foot. He sent it soaring away into the top left-hand corner of McAlpine's goal. United pulled one back on 72 minutes, Bonner failing to hold a Pettigrew shot and this time it was Paul Sturrock who was on hand to score from the rebound. The final whistle was the signal for an outpouring of joy from the massed Celtic ranks. Danny McGrain was carried shoulder high around the track to take the acclaim of the fans who were still unwilling to leave after they finally left the field. Jim Reynolds wrote, if the players had conducted themselves in a proper manner, then the fans were championship class too. They stayed behind the terracing wall and celebrated long after the end, hoping that their manager would take a bow. Eventually, McNeil and Clark appeared to be chaired by their players. Dundee United manager Jim McLean had a reputation for being curmudgeonly, but he was frequently complimentary about Celtic and was quoted by Hugh Taylor in the Evening Times of the 23rd of April, with supporters like these, how can you fail to be champions? 
they are just incredible. I give Celtic credit for playing really well and beating us, but these fans look as though they are part of the team. It was the season a star was born with the emergence of the cannonball kid Charlie Nicholas. Together with Frank McGarvey and Davy Proven, they formed a forward line that had swept Celtic to their third title in five years with a record number of goals scored. Billy McNeil pinpointed that defeat at Pataudry as the turning point of the campaign, telling Hugh Taylor in the Evening Times of the 23rd of April, I believe a talk-in after we had lost 4-1 to Aberdeen on December 27th could have been the turning point. We had a serious talk-in, a talk in which I laid it all on the line. I asked the lads if they just wanted to be second best, if they had lost their pride, but how they responded, they did us proud. <laughs>